Sup, powerful nonsenses. Hello. It's episode 137. Of oh, the Powerful Nonsense Show. Well, we already have a theme tune at the beginning. <laughs> we don't need to. Write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. We don't need a custom one <laughs> host theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, welcome back, guys, if you are returning. returning guests. And guests, uh, if guests. you are here for the first time, then welcome. Congratulations, you made it to the other side. You may regret this decision. <laughs> we are sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Wayne Ingram. I'm Jamie Aldiz. And yes, we are here to talk today about being a bit of a comeback kid. That's it, getting your fighting gloves on or back on. Yeah, getting, getting back, back on the, the horse. Ring, getting back in the ring. Back in the race. Uh, 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 back to your best. Yeah. Uh, Coming and, back from injury. Yeah. That's kind of come back in, come back, the, in yeah. the thing. Uh, you, you're, a, you're a returning wrestler with your new theme tune and your new outfit. Yeah, all that all stuff. All that stuff. Just getting proper jazzed up. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> so, <laughs> I think this is going to be a really good episode. I've got a lot to talk about with this yes. one, I think. Because I feel like I might be tooting my own horn here. Toot, toot. When you never toot your own horn. This is so unlike you. I know. Why? So out of I know, right? I mean, wow. it's just... Modest mouse over here. <laughs> I mean, I just woke up on another side of the bed today. I just... <laughs> I'm surprised you woke up, to be honest, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me too. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like I'm in a bit of a midst of a bit of a comeback at the there, moment. You know, so fighting, fighting fit, kind of. Fighting fit, feeling... En- well, not feeling energised no. today, but, but mostly feeling energised and fired up. So I think I'm going to have a fair bit to say. And I kind of had this uh, episode idea because I think a lot of the time people get so it's kind of a bit like the stuck in a rut episode we did a while back, but it's also oh, this that's like, old. It is an old episode. That is old. But it's also that idea that I think a lot of the time people over time of the the sort of energy or the motivation is beaten out of them mm. over. It takes like years. It starts with like a little thing, but over time, like they say, like a hairline fracture can become like a massive crater. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time people have had the the faith, the motivation just beating out of them, whether it's just getting stuck into the day-to-day or yeah. it's kind of getting to that point where you're just like, you know what, I'm just not myself anymore. I've let myself go. I've given up. I'm just not feeling it anymore. I don't know what's happened. I mean, my dad's been saying it for years to me. He's just like, I just don't have the same energy I used to have. And it's that uh-huh. idea that there's a lot of things that are going on in your life that kind of got you to that point. But yeah. then it's kind of like, you've got to kind of treat it like a, uh, say, like a sports star who has actually... Right. Lost their kind of streak, yeah. Lost their streak, or they've got an injury. They've been knocked out of the game. Tell you what, like I am always. I'm a big wrestling fan. I'm cultivating my weird side. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm a big wrestling fan, right? But I am amazed sometimes when I see the sorts of injuries these wrestlers have. Right? They, they're really bad, and just the power they put into their rehab is just. I'm like. I do not know how you do that. Mm-hmm. Like people like people coming back six months early from an mm-hmm. injury because they're like, no, I'm getting back in that ring. Mm-hmm. And they're just like, and when they show like the behind the scenes rehab, okay, yeah, it might be slightly sensationalized, but I'm just like, <laughs> but man, you it. are, yeah. yeah, they are hungry. I'm like, you want it. And they come back so much stronger than and they you just feel the energy that now got, yeah like, i mean again it's all sensationalized and it's all like the theme tune hits yeah. and they're like yeah like, no, can they be bad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? but like oh it just amazes me and i think if 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 the world could just like capture that lightning in a bottle mm-hmm. and just be like yeah you're kind of feeling like you're stuck in a rut here have this uh, I think it would be amazing. Yeah, and I think a lot of the time, instead of an actual being like a physical injury, I think like what people need is that sort of like emotional rehab. Yeah. So yeah. I think it is that you've been beaten emotionally a lot of the time and it's just got overwhelming. It has knocked you to the ground and mm-hmm. you kind of think, sod it, that's it. Like, I'm not getting up. But I find... That's why I think a lot of these sports stars, when they get injured, it's motivational to hear people say, he's not going to be back for two years. He's not going to make anything of his life. That's yeah, it. That's Career's it. ended. Yeah. I think it's kind you of You will that. never wrestle again yeah. for, for, if you're a wrestler. Yeah, yeah. Or you'll never play sports again. Or, and yeah. I think it's quite motivating sometimes to be sort of counted out. 
And I think yeah. people think, all right, that's it, you're done. But it's kind of like, I think there's that little energy inside you that's sort of still in the game. I used to, going back to that sort of wrestling analogy, it's like, who was it that used to, like, when they get, like, choked out or something, or they're on the floor and they're passed out from, like, a hold, and then they're out cold, their arms are dangling, uh-huh. and then suddenly you see their arms. Oh, the, the, rest, the referee would, like, the, drop yeah, the arm. Yeah, the referee's drop the arm, and you're thinking... And then it'd be the third yeah. one, which would be, if it drops, Yeah, and the that's third, it, the third one, you're like, oh, God, he's totally out of it. And that third one, it just drops, and it's just about to hit the mat. And, and then it suddenly it just tenses like... up and you're like, wait, there's some life still in there. <laughs> and then and then they start hitting the canvas uh-huh. and then before long, like, they're up on their feet and then they do their finisher. Finisher, match over. And I think that's what people yeah. get to this point where literally like that last arm is just dropping his bad hit the canvas and this episode is meant to be that point where you're just like, no, uh-huh. there's some life in me still uh-huh. and I'm not going to take this and I'm not going to have this. And then I think that's what the kind of feeling we want to give people is that you do have some life left in you. Yes, you might have been kicked down and beaten down and everything seems to be going against you. But there is always, like if you're alive, there's always that little glimmer of hope that mm-hmm. you can kind of get that energy back. But sometimes it just means kind of embracing some new sort of attitudes, some habits, some just getting around some good people. And that's what mm-hmm. hopefully we talk about today. I do like the wrestling analogy. I think it's, it's right for this episode. Yeah, I feel like it as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm, it's a good, I'm happy It's a good that. metaphor. Yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Visual. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. so. So there's there's a note on here that has just keeps jumping out at me. It might be because it's the top one. Like, <laughs> it could be. <laughs> the one it just keeps jumping out at me because I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That that rings true to me at the moment. Which is um, the note that you've put. I'll read it verbatim. Mm-hmm. Is uh, failure is a sign of a lie, or sign of a lie. Is what you put. Do you know what? Do, do you know? Is what's it a typo? Do you know what's even better than that? It is a typo. Is it? What's it's it supposed actually... to be? Failure is a sign of life. Life, yeah. Well, okay. This is interesting. This Go is on. interesting, right? I thought the typo was that you missed out the le- the word a. <laughs> oh, <laughs> because you put failure is a sign of lie. Oh yeah. And a. I thought failure is a sign of a lie is what you meant. Oh. But it's a sign. Interesting. There we go. But do you know Switching what? But up. do you agree with the failure is a sign of a lie? Yeah, in the sense that. A in fame. some ways. In some ways, yes. It's kind of so funny that a typo couldn't create, make you see a different view on something. Uh-huh. But I think the thing is, obviously, failure is a lie in the sense that people think that it's over. Failure means like it's an end point, whereas there's never an end point. If my typo was correct, it would say life. So wherever uh-huh. there's life, there's still an opportunity, which is why failure mm-hmm. is a lie, because it's not over. Yeah. Is that right. kind of what you get? At? But it's right. kind of funny that I actually have a typo. But, but the, the angle that I was coming from mm. is more this idea of repeat failure because i think usually when you're in a point where you're stuck in a rut and you need a little bit of a comeback is you've had failure after failure knockback after knockback um and it's kind of that thing you keep doing the same things and you keep trying and you keep pushing and you're not getting anywhere and if you're getting that repeat failure the thing that jumped out at me was the fact that the lie is what you are trying to convince yourself is the right course of action. Yeah. It's because kind of... you're, you're repeatedly doing the wrong thing. Yeah. I and get because it. you're repeatedly failing, it's basically the lie is you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to change your game. Yeah. I was listening to Wayne Dyer yesterday and he had this an- analogy of this lady who said that like, it was like the different seasons of life. And she said on that first the first part of my life, I walked down the street and I fell down the hole. Mm-hmm. And then she talked about the second it's time. It's like me walking through life, to I, be I, I walked down the street and I saw the hole and I still fell down it. Uh-huh. The second time, I knew the hole was there. And I and it, I don't know, the way he says it is that mm-hmm. you basically keep, like you said there, you kind of repeat the same behaviours, hoping that you're going to get a different result. And the end point of that kind of analogy that he's saying was, instead of walking down that street that has the hole, I just went down a different street. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, people just exactly. keep doing the same thing. I think that's kind of what you're getting at. Exactly. There. And that's, uh, I mean, I'm I'm having a multi-stranded comeback at the moment, I feel. <laughs> I don't know if you would agree with that, Jen, but I kind of feel like everything's kind of slotting into place and I've kind of had this fire reignite because of multiple facets of mm. life have kind of come at me at the same time and I've changed, I've changed things up. I've changed the way I've looked at things. I've changed the way I've approached things. And... Um, that has just the energy that I've got from just going, do you know what? What I've been doing hasn't been working. And okay, yes, it makes me feel uncomfortable to do it differently because I've got into that groove of doing things a certain way. Mm-hmm. The, the the idea of potential opportunity that has come from just changing the tactic has been so invigorating. Mm-hmm. Whether or not what I'm doing now is the right thing, I don't know. That will that remains to be seen. But the fact that I have changed 
the way I'm looking at things and I've suddenly gone, this could actually play out completely differently and I don't know where it's going and I've just embraced that mm-hmm. kind of uncertainty. I've, I've embraced it rather than kind of going, oh, I don't know if this is going to work because it hasn't worked before because I'm going, well, I haven't tried it before. Yeah. So it could work and it could work really well. That's exciting. But that's why I think there's two types of a failure. There's that failure because of repeated behaviours, which is just going to get the same results before. But then I think there's, which is the main point of that, I think is failure is a sign of life. I think life is constantly changing. Now you're taking a different path. Failure is going to be inevitable in some way. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. so you're just failing in a different way, but eventually you're failing towards the right way. Mm-hmm. And, as, and I think that's why it's, yeah, there's a two difference in the type of failures you kind of experience. Mm-hmm. Mm. But yeah, next time I should probably check that I don't leave ty- typos in our. Yeah, but it was a point. good. It was a good typo. It was, it was, it was a for a reason. Fortunate yeah. typo. It was there. Um, I think the other thing to bear in mind, though, and this is kind of something that I have come to accept, although sometimes begrudgingly, um, is that um, excuse me, uh, <laughs> is that whether whether we like it or not, life is very cyclical. It's very much about spinning lots of plates at the same time and making sure that you're looking after all aspects of your life because the moment you start going oh my career's going really well I'm earning lots of money you start focusing on the money and then sometimes you go well actually if I work more then I can make more money and then so you your relationships start to dwindle because you're not looking after them and so then something will go wrong there and then sometimes in trying to juggle all these various aspects you actually all of them come crashing down because you can't manage all of them. So what I'm saying is, like, don't always... You, you always have to have the expe- expectation that something's going to go wrong. I think I might have brought this up on an episode a few months ago, uh, where... Oh, did I? Or was it in a private conversation with you? There's this idea, a friend of mine said, there's this idea where you can assume, and I think people that are stuck in a rut and need a comeback are in this mindset. You assume everything's kind of crap. And then you have your blip, which is the good stuff that happens. And that's a short, short, brief thing. And then it all goes back to, oh, this is crap. Um, or the alternative, mind- Ooh, the alternative mindset is to say, well, actually, no, everything's always great. The bad stuff's the blip. Mm-hmm. And I think if you can change that mindset, it's, which is very difficult to do when you're in the midst of being stuck in a rut. I know. Um, but I think sometimes all it takes is just that catalyst to go, actually, yeah. Actually, everything's really freaking good, and I just kind of need to ride that wave of goodness for as long as I can. And don't worry if something comes along, and don't go into a state of despair of like, oh, it's all going to go to shit, because that's when you get yourself back stuck in a rut again. Yeah, I get what you're saying there. And I think, yeah, when it comes to sort of like a, uh, a comeback, though, I think it's more... Because I don't think everyone should always feel that everything's just... I mean, people are unconsciously unconscious of the fact that there are a lot of good things, and like you say, mm-hmm. the... the great things stand out more and the thing and the uh bad things kind of like beat you down more whereas i guess a lot of the philosophers say that you should kind of keep on level nothing mm-hmm. good or bad yeah thinking true. makes it so or whatever they yeah, say yeah true but um on that i just think like with a comeback though i think it's not i don't know i think it's sort of a, a mindset of being willing to kind of just go for it i don't know it's kind of well a comeback is a lot more holistic yeah i think it's kind of you've you've just got to that point where it's enough. Like, enough is Mm -hmm. enough. Like, this is not working. And you know what? I just need to get fired back up into it. And that's kind of, like, where I feel a lot of people need it. I think they're kind of just so just given up. I think a lot of of people just kind of give up to a point. I think at our age group as well, there's so many people Mm. that kind of got themselves into that space where they thought this was what they wanted. And it's so far removed from what they actually want. That I think... And the thing as well, I think people, particularly in our age group, you know, 30s coming and knocking. Yeah. And I think that's the point where people are starting to go, shit, is this my lot? Yeah. Which really is... Horrendous to think. Horrendous to think, because actually people that are in their 50s will be like, you still got ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got more years to come. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think there's so much pressure on, you know, having your shit together that I think sometimes too early we go, oh, is this it? And then we we just continue to beat ourselves down into this state of like, oh, well, this is all I'm going to get. And so we kind of, we almost, if we're talking about lighting up a fire inside of you, we almost kind of like starve that fire of oxygen because we kind of go, oh, well, this is it. Mm -hmm. As opposed to like, oh, what 
what really gets me excited. Yeah, well, I think like having that sort of youth on your side, I think you've got that. I think it's like great when people can see at this age that they've got the opportunity to change things again. Mm-hmm. But I do think you kind of go through that thing where you, especially towards the late 20s, you kind of get yourself into a solid. Then you think, yes. I'm adulting I've, really well. I've sussed it all out. Yeah. I've worked out life. Yeah, you're adulting and then suddenly things aren't working out as you plan. But then you've still got a lot of that energy to be like, oh, actually, no, I can. Your greatest comeback is getting back to what you actually know you value, but mm-hmm. you've kind of been pulled away from it a lot. Yeah, definitely. But, um, yeah. So I think we should take a break. You know, it's really hard where this is positioned because I can't see the notes at all. <laughs> so my mic is <laughs> blocking off. You <laughs> but, just have to. Pop your head around. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) But yeah, we'll let Jem take a look at the notes and we'll take a break. So we'll be back. So we thought we'd just take a few seconds just to say thank you to our sponsor, the University of Northampton. Huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Um, So why should you check them out? Well, first of all, we're alumni. We went there. So everything that we kind of delivered to you kind of comes from them in a way. Um, But also... They're not just about getting a degree. The thing we love about Northampton Uni from experience is the fact that you come out of your course with your degree, but also there's so many options on the table. They understand that it's not just about going out and getting a job anymore. It's also about the possibility of setting up your own business and becoming an entrepreneur. And to top that off, (laughs) it's not just about setting up a business. It's about setting up a social enterprise. That's their specialist area. So if you're thinking of setting up a business, it can also be one that's doing good to the world and delivering social impact. So check them out, northampton.ac.uk. And a huge thank you to them for supporting the show. Welcome back. Hello. You you came back. Come back. <laughs> yeah. Came back, come back. Anyway. Oh, Wayne. Uh, so, <laughs> now the dad joke's out of the way. Um, yeah, so we're talking about manifesting your greatest comeback. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about something during the break. Um which I think is this, which we touched on in the first half, but I think good worth revisiting, is this idea that uh, if you sometimes to have your comeback, it really takes you to really be in like pretty much undefeated yeah. in a way. It you've got to the point it's where a, a to use point. the wrestling man- analogy, as you said, you've tapped out. <laughs> yeah. You've tapped out. Yeah. You've been pinned to the ground. Done and. It, you know, you're at a point where it's like, ah, oh, my career's over. It's done. I'm done. Or well, this is like, or it. or yeah. rather, everybody else is going, mate, you done. <laughs> yeah, I think it's true. I think you people only get fired up by that comeback if you generally think you're at rock bottom. Mm-hmm. And I think that's rock bottom. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, it, is, it is that tipping point. I'm just going to throw in as many finishes in like <laughs> one line of quotes, but um. No, Sorry. Go, no, I'm actually trying to think of one, but no. <laughs> but no, it's that idea that you have reached enough of the tipping point that you know what, you've hit rock bottom, so now if that's it, yeah. Mm-hmm. The only way is up ultimately from there because you're at the lowest point. And I think that is the moment that I think people get really, really fired up. But mm-hmm. I think you have to, when you're going for that comeback, you've got to really, really, really want it. You can't yeah. just like kind of want it. It needs to be something that that's it. This is enough. I'm making a change. Yeah. And I think it's annoying that for humans like they can sustain so much pain mm-hmm. or they can sustain it so long or our, our brains adapt so well that they kind of like even trick us into thinking okay this is not as bad as it actually is but over time you were just taking so much shit or you're just like this is enough it's the it's it's a kind it's kind of the reverse of the well it's not the reverse of it is it's the negative side of the compound effect mm-hmm. with the compound effect being you know if you do a small good habit uh every day for the rest of your life, eventually it will compound and you'll have some massive uh, um, return on whatever that habit is, even if it's just like doing 10 press-ups every morning for as soon as you get out of bed or whatever. Ultimately, that's going to have an effect. But in the same respect, the negative things like the, oh, do you know what? Do you know what? I'm not feeling that great today, so I'm going to have a donut or whatever, as an example. If you did that every day, diabetes will come a-knocking. Yeah, if you stay late after work, or you yeah. start doing things... Or you, you, kind you of go for a drink every night after work, and your liver's not going to be in much good <laughs> nick after a few years, and just stuff like that. And I think, as you say, the brain will trick you into thinking, well, it's not that... Everybody else is doing it. Yeah, well, it's not that bad, it's fine. And then, But eventually, 
it has a real knock on effect. Like there's some things that um, I'm kind of looking back on now going, oh man, like that was some bad decisions that I didn't even realize I was making that I've just been subconsciously kind of going along with and whatever. And it's all fine and nice and dandy. And then I get to it and I'm like, oh, I've done myself some damage. Like, it's just so easy to, to kind of drift into those those bad habits just because you've kind of not accepted that you're in a bad place. Mm-hmm. And I think as well, when you are at that rock bottom, I think usually it takes being able to see the things. I think when you're at that rock bottom, you only, maybe you're in, dark, you're in a bad place, but I think there's opportunities to kind of see what you actually want the most or value the most. I think it's usually then you get that clarity. Yeah. It is. It's that clarity. I think that's you hit the, the rock bottom and you go, like, okay, nothing's worked, but yeah. I know I really want this thing, and that's the only point of energy in mm-hmm. what I have inside. Like that thing is the only thing I'm doing it for, for my family, for my kids. Mm-hmm. Or for the, your and I think the... I think that clarity comes because when you when you really hit rock bottom, you you understand what your biggest values are. Because I think when you hit rock bottom, you automatically go into that very it's almost like the brain to try and help you cope goes, starts looking inward. Mm. It starts looking. In fact, you said, what was it you said to me the other day? I think feel like this is a similar point oh, about I text you and said something. Uh, n- no, we, we, we talked about it over text, but we, I think we said it when we went for the run. It's about, um, Oh yeah. Not making everything about, I wasn't, I'd stopped making everything about me and I'd stopped, internalizing everything that was coming my way and actually starting to go, well, actually, no, that's someone else's issue. That's uh, an issue that belongs to something else. That's not a reflection on my character. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's not a reflection on my abilities or my talent or my drive. Um, I've still got those things. It's just they've not come at me at the right time. And rather than go in, oh, my God, I am so rubbish, (laughs) I'd now started going, that's okay. I can't control that. Let's just work on what I can control. Which actually, funny enough, I was watching Darren Brown's Miracle last night. Mm-hmm. Uh, you saw Miracle Live, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he starts talking about that sort of stuff. There are two things that you can control. Uh, I can't remember which philosopher it was that said it, but there are two things that you can control, which are your thoughts and your actions. Yeah. And everything else is uncontrollable. So you may as well just focus on concentrating on your thoughts and your actions. And on that basis, uh, what I've learned to do is control my thoughts, which is don't worry. It's not a negative uh, outlook on yourself. It's just things haven't fallen into place. So, you know, sort out that mindset. And then the other thing is go, right, what actions can I take to improve things? And it kind of goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. If you keep doing the same thing in the same way, all the time, you're not actually taking control of your actions, really. Mm-hmm. You're externalizing it and going, well, I'm doing everything right. So it's everybody else is doing everything wrong. And if that might be the case, but if you continue to do those same actions and you're getting the same results, then you one should assume that actually you need to change up your actions and probably your thoughts as well and it kind of goes back we've done a blog post before and like post-traumatic growth it is once you're at that bottom level you sort of take off the the jacket of all the bs all the kind of surface level stuff Mm -hmm. and then it's like those people who are in like car crashes and are now made like uh disabled or something's gone totally wrong that suddenly they're at that rock bottom point in bed injured life's going to be life's going to be completely different but at that moment the value comes back of what they actually care about. And suddenly the energy, these people become more motivated in their disabled mm-hmm. form than they ever were in their abled form. Yeah. And it's kind of that, I think, when you've hit that rock bottom, that's it, you just let off everything and it's kind of like a release. But it's yeah. quite sad that it's upsetting that people have to get it sometimes to that, to that point. that point. Because it is available to you at any moment. It's just being able to... And I think it kind of goes back to that idea of uh, Marcus Aurelius saying meditate on death. It's that idea mm. if you can put yourself in the position of rock bottom, which is death, yeah, I think then you get the clarity from that of what really matters, and then mm-hmm. that gives you the hope in some ways. But I think yeah, if you are if you are wanting to come back, you kind of have to really take that time to delve in. And yeah. I think maybe you, maybe you've not hit the point where you've fucked up enough, or maybe you've not hit that tipping point yet. Yeah, but it doesn't have to go deeper. It doesn't have to wait till you've ruined your relationship. It doesn't have to wait till you've got your fired from your job or, yeah. or whatever else. It's a it's a moment that's available there at any point. 
but your comeback is being in a state where you're just driven, you're mm-hmm. fired up, you're taking the right actions, not the same actions and getting the same results. Yeah. It's, um, like you say, it's those habits, which are really, really, really important. I think anybody that you look at who's successful, they're going to have these really positive habits, mm-hmm. like someone who's on a comeback, like a constant comeback. And I think... yeah. It isn't just, again, it's not a quick spurt of a six-week body transformation and that's your comeback and then you end it at that point. Believe me, I've tried. <laughs> you've got to be on a, you've got to be on a, like a 24-7 comeback. Like yeah. Everything is developing to you to get to your be- to be your best person Yeah. rather than see it as, you know what, this is going to be a little comeback. Because I think I know so many people who are boom and bust with their emotions where they yeah. motivate for six weeks and then they're down again. They motivate for six weeks and then they're down again. And I think you've got to kind of get yourself into a state where you're always preparing to be the best you you can be, really. Mm -hmm. Well, they say, what is it? Something about luck is a combination of preparation and opportunity yeah i think it is that it's so funny you're kind of like your your brain's kind of raveling through your brain to pick up each yeah. quote that you're kind of thinking back have you done well yeah. those two is oh good yeah. thanks <sighs> remembering formulas was not my best strength <laughs> at school um but yeah and and i think it goes to that thing is it's like you you could be like oh i'm just not lucky but are you putting yourself in a position where when that opportunity comes along you're always ready Mm-hmm. that's a mistake I've made so many times is opportunities come along and I've not been quite ready um, and, and, I, and I think that's always something really important to assess and I think as well like one thing that I think can really hold you in good stead particularly if you are just about to enter a comeback is just own those scars like just own them mm-hmm. like acknowledge the fact that maybe you fucked up or maybe somebody fucked you over or whatever but just kind of go, yeah, that happened. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that has shaped me. But you know what? Like, uh, just firing me up, just thinking about it already. But like, but you know what? I'm going to take that and I'm going to use that. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as like with stress. You can either get really stressed out and, and use it as a negative or you can just go, yeah, this is my body preparing me for something that I'm going to have to be ready for and embracing it. And I think if you go, yeah, few people screwed me over, I screwed myself over, but you know what? I won't make that same mistake again. That's just much better position to be in than the the plum effect, the mm. poor little old me. I'm like, oh, everybody keeps <laughs> doing me wrong and I can't get anything right. And that's just going to send you into a downward spiral. Believe yeah, me, I, I know. And I think a good point, sort of, I mean, you're coming to the end of the episode and I think a really good quote to sort of sum up what you said there, but also just kind of have something to think about is what Eric Thomas says. He's like, you're already in pain. You might as well get a reward from it. It's, oh yeah i like that it's kind uh, of that yeah, idea that if you're in pain like you're you're ha- taking all this pain you're taking all these beats you might as well get something out of it yeah definitely. that means having your comeback and going after what you want eventually bloody hell go for it why just yeah just take the beats and not get anything out of it yeah you've, you've, you've gone through those experiences they've carved you and i think it's that question of where you where something crap comes along okay give yourself the moment to go oh this is crap and then go to yourself okay what does what opportunities does this now allow? Mm-hmm. Which is what I did recently, which I think is why I'm on this comeback. I've suddenly gone, do you know what? Like, this is really shit. Yeah. And then I almost repeated the same actions again. And then I went, actually, do you know what? I felt so crap about this for so long. Like, I'm just going to use it as an opportunity to change my tact. Mm-hmm. And I feel so much better for it in every way. And I think you'll find people who are really successful in anything they do... They accept a bad situation, but they instantly go looking for that reward. Yeah. Like, okay, this is bad, but there's something good in it somewhere. Yeah. And I think the quicker you can get to that point, it's not avoiding what's bad. It's just saying, okay, that's bad. But again, goes back to um, what you can control and in your actions. Mm-hmm. Like, it goes back to that point. You just look at the situation from those two perspectives, and then that's enough. And then you can get back on the horse, take the action, get the positiveness out of it, because everything is going to develop you in some way. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a good place to wrap up. Yes. I think that is a really good place to wrap up. So, if you like the episode, give us a thumbs up on YouTube, or leave a review on iTunes. We always appreciate those. We still, despite me pestering people via episodes, we still haven't had a new review lately. Horrendous. It's been many, many months. I'm very upset with you all. Very upset with you all. If you haven't left a review yet, can please leave one. It will be detention for all of you. Oh, God. <laughs> Very upset. Five stars or more. Maybe it's just because they don't want to leave less than five stars. We haven't earned the five stars. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe it's us. 
Maybe, you see? Could be. I'm learning from the episode. I've asked so many times and nothing's happened, so maybe I've got to do something different. I'm going to leave a review. <laughs> <laughs> when, all, when all else fails, do it yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and also, if you haven't subscribed on YouTube or iTunes, then please hit them subscribe buttons. Show notes, by the way, are at powerfulnonsense.com forward slash 137. No, 137. Definitely 137. Cool. Don't listen to him. It's 137. <laughs> um, and if you end up with the wrong page, it was his fault, not mine. Um. <laughs> but listen to that episode anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Um, so, yeah. And also, do you know what, actually? I haven't put these out there for a, while, for a very long time. Send us an email. Like, if you want to just have a chat, or if you want to, you I know. I got an email the other day, actually. Yeah, me too. And we got two different people as well, I think. Yeah! <laughs> popular um <laughs> yeah send us send us an email send us an email I'm Wayne at powerfulnonsense.com and I'm Jem at powerfulnonsense.com and that's Jem with a C C yeah. yeah. cool that's enough of us yes that's enough of us so thanks very much guys and we'll catch you next time see you later